Hi, welcome to Fork in the Loaf. My name is Heather, and today I'm going to be making, you're gonna join me making dinner. I'm going to make um, chili with all pantry staple items. Like, my ground beef is not, my ground beef is from the freezer, uh, but everything else is pretty much stuff that I have in my pantry. And then I'm making cornbread, uh, from scratch cornbread, to just one, show you how easy it is, and two, I'm gonna make it gluten-free. So I'm just going to bring you along with me for that. Hold on just a moment, I'm gonna point you down and we're gonna get started with the cornbread. Um, because I wanna have that ready to go as soon as the chili is done. We're not doing the chili from dry beans, we're doing it from our canned beans, the beans that I have canned. I canned these back in April, I believe. So we're going to be using some of the beans that I jarred up um, for the chili. So for the cornbread, we're gonna get that going and get that started, um, get the oven heating up. It is August, but we're dealing with that um, Hillary, tropical storm Hillary or whatever that hit. And it's even affecting us here in Idaho. We just got a lot of rain. It's been a little bit cooler, but it's still warm enough and muggy. We're not used to that muggy stuff here. Anyway, so I'm gonna point you down and get started. So I have the quite the mess going on here. I'm gonna be making chili with this stuff. Oh, sorry, that stuff. This stuff is all for um, my cornbread. Okay, so for my cornbread, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get about two tablespoons of butter into the skillet. This is a cold skillet as of right now, but I'm gonna stick it into the oven and get it heating up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my oven at 400 degrees. Um, you can put it up to 425, mine runs a little hot. So 400 usually, I usually go about 25 degrees lower on my oven. Know your oven, if yours is too hot at 425, put it at 400. If it's not hot enough, put it up to 430, 450, whatever you can do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in my oven while it heats up and I'll be right back. Okay, so in my large bowl, I'm going to put two eggs and look at my, my babies or um, my chicks that I got this spring are laying brown eggs for me, yay. And I still have white eggs coming from my older hens. And in the eight, I don't know, I think five, six years, eight, I don't even know how long I've been doing chickens. I've only had one egg bad. So I'm not super afraid of them. Now, if you wanted to do this from your pantry items explicitly, you could use powdered milk, and I would mix that in with the flour and the baking soda and all your dry ingredients. But because I have milk on hand, I get a raw milk from a local, uh, fairly local farmer. Um, it's so good too. I'm just gonna use the milk that I have now once you cook it it kind of ruins the whole purpose of raw but it's what milk I have so that's what I'm going to use I do have powdered milk also but I kind of I need to refill it and so I, I hate to open and unseal a mylar bag of powdered milk when I don't know when I'm going to be using it again next and I can get away with using this so if you have powdered milk you would use enough milk to make one cup of the powder and then you're gonna just whisk it in with your flour and your baking soda and all that stuff and then you'll use water to equal one cup so I'm gonna mix that in here I'm gonna add a quarter cup of oil it calls for order quarter cup of shortening on the recipe that I use but I don't use shortening at all anymore so I'm just gonna add oil I could use coconut oil which is shortening like I could use palm oil I could use avocado oil I could use butter really whatever you um, like to use for fat. You could use, if you use stuff like canola oil, you could use canola oil. It, my recipe calls for half a cup of sugar. Now the recipe that I'm using is an old recipe that um, I have tweaked so much, I don't even know what the original recipe is anymore. But it calls for half a cup of sugar and I try to avoid sugar, so I'm just gonna add a couple tablespoons of honey and this is the honey that I used to cook. It's just from Costco. I'm going to get this all mixed together. I'm going to add about a quart. So this is a one half teaspoon. I'm going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon. So about half of that. You don't need a ton of... 
I don't feel like I need a ton of salt in there or a ton of sweeteners. Cornbread. Cornbread's not supposed to be sweet, right? But if you like your cornbread sweeter, you can definitely add the half cup of sugar. You could, I've done even three quarters of a cup of sugar. So really it just kind of depends how sweet you want it. The more sweet you give it, the more cake-like consistency it's gonna have. I kind of looked a little bit at the history of cornbread and it sounds like we got it from the Native Americans. And when the settlers came over here to, you know, settle America from England or, you know, all those European countries, cornbread was what helped sustain our settlers. And we love to have cornbread with our chili. So that's kind of why I'm making it tonight because we're going to have chili for dinner tonight. My recipe used to call uh, called for a cup of cornmeal and a cup of flour. I've kind of changed it around a little bit. I want it to be a little bit more corny and a little less floury. So I'm going to put in, I have cornmeal here and I'm gonna grind it and make it just a little bit finer. I, I, I love cornbread. I don't always love how gritty it can be. With my mock mill, um, this is low, this is high. I like to use a slightly higher edge. It fits down here just a little bit better. Um, I'm going to start with, I'm going to use a cup of corn meal, but I'm going to grind it finer. I've got mine on a one. I really want it fine. And I'm going to use about a half of a cup of corn meal and grind it finer in my mock mill. So I tried a heaping cup of cornmeal. Let's see what it gives us. It does not give us a cup. So it gave us about a half a cup of cornmeal. So I'm gonna do another half cup of cornmeal. <laughs> my grinder did not like how much uh, oils or liquid it's kind of moist more moist than some of my flowers can be so I got me a cup of you know what? I'm just going to use all of this corn because I think yeah I am I'm going to use so for my gluten-free flour, I use about, I don't know the ratios, and it depends on what I'm using. Sometimes I use buckwheat, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I use quinoa, sometimes I don't. It just depends on the flavor profile. The corn, I kind of want my flowers to be a little bit on the mild, milder side. So I'm going to put my mock mill at four, because that's what it says to do for oat groats, for oats. They are a little bit oilier. And again, I'm going to do... I'm gonna do a half cup of oat groats. No, I'm gonna do, sorry. I'm gonna do a quarter cup of oat groats. I only need three quarters of a cup of flour. So let's just go ahead and use this bowl. Put the oat groats in there. Put it back to my, it's actually at like 0.5. That is not close enough. That's close enough. I'm gonna put in a half cup of brown rice. There's two tablespoons of millet. And then I'm gonna use This is two tablespoons of a tapioca flour or starch. all this together because I'm trying to make a flour 
Um, you can add xanthan gum, and if it were something that I wanted it to be more bread-like, uh, I would probably add the xanthan gum to it. But because I am not, it, cornbread can be crumbly. That's part of the joy of cornbread is that dry, crumbly, cracky, I don't know, like, like texture that's not quite like a wheat flour. So it's, I love it. <laughs> so in my cornbread, I already added the corn flour and I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of my gluten-free flour and you can use your store-bought as long as it's a one-to-one -one ratio um i do know that is it namaste that you get from costco i like that stuff i've used that um but so far i kind of just like making my own i can play with it i can add different flavors and textures and and then to top it all off, I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of baking soda, which if you were going to whisk your flowers together, I would put it in with that and then dry it, but I just, call me a lazy cook. And one of the things with uh, your home fresh grill, ground flowers is sometimes they can absorb more moisture. So the fact that I used honey and oil will help with that moisture content um, it will absorb and you don't have to beat this silly but you do want it to be kind of smooth I guess like you don't want big lumps which I've never had problems with that all right so that is my cornbread mix and I'll be right back with a hot pan so I put a half a teaspoon of baking soda in here and my recipe calls for like four teaspoons of baking powder. And so because I already put a half a teaspoon of baking soda, I'm, I'm just gonna put just slightly under a tablespoon of baking powder. Because the baking soda is gonna lift it way more than the baking powder will. But the baking powder will have less of that uh, baking soda flavor. This is going to make them a little bit tougher, but eh. try not to get, oh, Heather, watch for lumps because I just got a big old baking powder lump. <laughs> One of us is going to good, get a body goodness. Okay, so my pan is hot. The butter is melted. I'm going to just kind of squoosh it up a little bit around the edges. It got a little bit of a browning going on. That's okay. That will not hurt. And this is just, I think this is the eight inch pan, um, which was one that I have a tendency to use all the time for biscuits and cornbreads and all that kind of stuff. I don't know why, I think I just like the size, that it's a perfect size for this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go set this in the oven for 20 minutes and then when that timer goes off, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, and while we're waiting for the cornbread to cook, we're gonna get started on our chili. And because my chili, is using beans that I canned and stuck on my shelf. I do not need to use, I don't need a lot of time for this chili. It's really just to meld those flavors of all that chili together. I love my Kulina knives, just so y'all know. You know, Kulina, if you ever wanted to, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. I don't know anything about how that affiliate stuff works, but I really like my Kulina knives. If I were smart, I'd get out my chopper and I'd do up a whole jar of onions, but I just felt like chopping them today by hand. <laughs> that happens every once in a while. 
Do you ever do that? Like where you want to wash your dishes by hands instead of just loading the dishwasher? Every once in a while I get that wild crazy urge. Hair, whatever. I love celery in my um, in my chili. I'm not quite sure why. I think I used to love, my mom and I used to go, it was a thing for her and I to go to Wendy's and get a burger of theirs and get some of their chili. Their chili, I loved their chili. And then through all the trying to get off of the oils that aren't healthy for you and all that stuff, we've just kind of quit eating out as much as we can. I mean, we're not, we're definitely not good at it yet, but we're trying. And, uh, that was one of the things that went away. I need to be like a little bit taller. rough chop everything it's gonna get cooked in there pretty good and I'm gonna go ahead and pull you over to my stove and we'll go we'll start doing all the cooking part for the chili this uh, the beef that I have is pretty it's very lean it's I get it from Costco um, and so I'm just gonna add just a little bit of oil to this to kind of help keep it from sticking I just got done baking bread in here today, so you'll see a little bit of brownness from the, the bread, but it's it's good. Okay, so oil's getting hot. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my celery, my onion, and my peppers. Not hot enough yet, I didn't hear a sizzle. I'm gonna hold off on the garlic, because the garlic, um, it cooks out, so you want to put it in just a little bit later. I like to do it just a little bit later. And these are some of the red peppers that I froze from earlier this season, which I think, I can't remember if I got a video of that or not. I know I've meant to. I'm adding about one red pepper's worth, like not a huge one. I've got about two or three ribs of celery and about a half of a, a large onion. I'm gonna be adding beef to it as well. And I have two options for the beef. I have a pound of beef here, or I grabbed a can of this stuff. It's I, the brand I've never heard of at nurture store. Um, cooked seasoned ground beef patty crumble. And the ingredients, it's from American Fork, Utah. Beef, less than 2% salt, natural flavors, grill flavor, natural flavor from sunflower oil, and gum Arabic spice. So I wanted to try this. My husband and I are talking about getting one of those Harvest Right freeze dryers, and he, he's a little worried that we're not going to like the product that comes from it. So I said, well, let's try some of the stuff that's out there that's freeze dried. And so I've been trying to find things to cook with it. So I could use this and just show you this frozen, but I think we'll just keep it simple. Like, we'll try that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to cook these till the onions are translucent. So here's two and a half cups of that freeze-dried ground beef. And I think it's very interesting that they're all little round pebbles like that. I don't think that my home freeze-dried ground beef would be round little pebbles like that, but here we go. Okay, so the onions are translucent. Well, as translucent as I'm willing to wait for them to get. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add some a can of diced green chilies. You can use them as spicy as you like. We like it mild, and then we'll add spice to our own. Um, in my refrigerator, I have some salsa that I canned a while back. And instead of using a jar of tomatoes, which I'm currently out of, 
I'm going to use this salsa that I have that needs to get used up. And then I have some, this is enchilada sauce that needs to get used up. And I'm just going to use about half of that just because just to add a little bit of that flavor. I have black beans. And I'm going to just add the whole jar. I have pinto beans. Again, I'm just going to add the whole jar. And kidney beans. I'm going to put three different kinds of beans in here. Now this is where I start to think about adding spices. amazing already. I'm going to go ahead and taste. Everything in here is pretty much cooked already. This is my homemade taco seasoning and I'm going to add about three tablespoons. Um, when I make tacos I use about two tablespoons but because there's a lot more to this I'm going to add three tablespoons. We'll get it stirred in, let it get it heated up, and then we'll give it a taste. Don't be afraid to taste things as long as everything is cooked already. If you had things like raw kidney beans, I definitely would not taste it. Raw kidney beans uh, actually have a toxin in them, from what I understand. So try not to eat those raw or undercooked. Now I'm gonna add all, I'm, gonna, I'm not even rehydrating this. I'm gonna add this in right now. And this is gonna make it way too thick because it's gonna absorb all that liquid in there. So I'm gonna add some beef broth, probably about a cup or two. We'll see. So this is two cups of a beef bone broth that I just made today. And um, it's grass fed bone, bone broth. So I'm not gonna get rid of that fat. And I've only done it through one two hour cycle. I need to do it through two two hour cycles. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all two cups in there. And I'm, I will post on down below what my recipe is for this with normal everyday ingredients, like the kind of ingredients that I would normally use for my pantry and all that stuff. I don't always have these freeze dried uh, meat in here and I don't always have um, use salsa I usually just use jarred tomatoes so I'm just gonna make sure I put the regular recipe in there for you and you can really play with it however you want to it's kind of what I do is I just play with it by playing with it I mean you could use ground turkey or ground chicken instead of ground beef you could just use beans and not use any meat at all you could use beef cubes like a stew meat oh I love chili with stew meat um, you don't have to add the celery. I just love celery in it. You don't have to add the any of the peppers to it, although the pepper is kind of, I think, what gives it a chili flavor. You can make it spicier. My dog's pestering me to go out. Okay, cornbread just came out. There is my cornbread. Kind of looks delicious. At this point, I could add the garlic. There is garlic in my taco, or yeah, my taco seasoning, um, but I like adding a little extra garlic. Now mind you, I could probably handle adding fresh garlic to mine. My husband likes it more cooked and gentle. He doesn't like it quite as strong as fresh would do. And he's eating this too, so I'm gonna help, I'm gonna accommodate his, his flavor profile too. not look good I think it looks beautiful and last but not least 
I'm going to add about a tablespoon of lime juice. You can use lemon juice. You can use um, apple cider vinegar. I love lime juice in stuff like this. It just kind of seems like they're flavors that go together. And I'm just going to turn this down and let it come to a simmer and just stay at a simmer for probably about 15 minutes or so. It's ready to go now. Um, all those flavors are melded together, but I like my celery to just be cooked a little bit more. So I'm going to let it cook until that celery is all nice and done. And then I'll show you what we do when we plate it up. Let's turn that oven off. Turn this down and let it simmer. Cornbread is ready. Dinner is ready. Almost. <laughs> okay, so I just did a little taster on it. My dog's barking out back, sorry. And I'm gonna add a little can. This is one of those little eight ounce cans of tomato sauce. I'm just gonna add a little tomato sauce to it. I just feel like it needs a little more of that tomato-y flavor. Although the salsa is delicious in it, I really kind of like the salsa. It's not quite tomato-y enough. So I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato to it. And I might have to add another tablespoon of taco seasoning to it because it is just not seasoned enough. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to add one more tablespoon of taco seasoning. So that's like a quarter of a cup into my pot. I think I'll start with a half a tablespoon. Let's just add a half a tablespoon. A lot of the seasonings that I have in my taco seasoning, it, it's all the same stuff that you have in a chili. Uh, it's chili powder, it's cumin powder, and it's pretty much very similar to this uh, same profile as far as like amount of chili, the ratio of chili to cumin, and a little bit of oregano and all that fun stuff. So I figure, hmm, I just use it in my chili and it's delicious. Doesn't that look good? Oh, I'm excited. The, the meat in here does add a little bit of a, uh, that whatever that flavoring is they use to make that meat taste like grilled meat or whatever. I'm not sure I love that. So I think with my own ground beef, it, would, it wouldn't have that flavor. I'm not sure it would have the same texture either. So I'm hoping that he's, you know, he'll, I think he can understand that. Mmm, way better. It doesn't need another tablespoon. That half tablespoon is perfect. So maybe just add a lot, like a heavier handed three tablespoons. Mm. I'm excited. All right, I'll be back with you when we decide to plate this up and sit down to eat. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and plate us up for dinner. One of my favorite ways to eat chili is with some cheese on it. One of my, I don't know about you guys, my favorite herb is either, I would say it's a toss up between basil and cilantro. I could eat cilantro on everything. Not true, but you know. And I'm, I'm out of sour cream right now, or else I'd put a dollop of sour cream on there too, but there's my chili. And my cornbread and that is dinner tonight I'm so excited and really you could top this with all kinds of stuff I just like a basic my husband doesn't even like the cheese or the cilantro on it he'll eat it just like that so thanks for joining me on this adventure of a fork in the loaf and I will see you next time